I've made some errors on Demilight version 0.9.1. That's the four inch tall 3D printed moving light project I'm working on. This version isn't done yet, but I did want to give you an update on what's been happening. The punchline is I made three critical errors in design and only caught two of them before going to manufacturing. So I had to fix the third one more or less manually. Let me explain. The main goal of Demilight version 0.9.1 was to scale up from the one or two prototypes per version that I had been doing to a batch of 10 lights so I could finally put on a little mini light show of some kind. Because of this, I was looking particularly at ways to reduce cost per light, both in the assembly of the light and in the PCB assembly and part selection. There was some low-hanging fruit. I switched this input buck converter from this nicely packaged plastic encased module to this PCB-based module, which doesn't look as nice and probably isn't quite as reliable, but it does save almost a dollar per board. I thought about switching some of the connectors to surface mount. You can get these little 0.1 inch headers in a surface mount version, but for mechanical stability, through hole really is preferred. And besides, they're not that hard to install. They don't take that much time and they're cheap. So these are gonna stay through hole for now. The other part where I figured I could save cost by going to a surface mount part is this big through hole inductor that's part of the buck converter circuitry that dims the primary output LEDs. And this is where I started to make some errors. The first one was a, an easy one to fix. I didn't check parts availability on JLC PCB's SMD assembly service before I picked a component that would go on the circuit board. So I finished laying out the new board, did the nice footprint, and when I went to order it, they did not have any 47 micro Henry inductors for me to use. Thankfully, the AL8860 is a fairly flexible buck converter driver, so I was able to swap in a 68 micro Henry inductor instead. Good, fine, easy correction. First error done. The second error, though, also had to do with this inductor. I built this surface mount footprint for the inductor wrong. Thankfully, JLC PCB's production engineers caught this error and sent me an email about it saying, hey, the pads on this surface mount part don't seem to line up with what you've got on your circuit board. We will build it like this if you really want us to, but will you just confirm before we do? So I canceled that order, remade the footprint, sent it back in, and got the parts ordered. Great, second error caught and fixed. The third error, though, I was not so lucky with. I did not double, triple check the bill of materials file. That's the file you submit along with your circuit board, telling the assembly house which position on the circuit board should be stuffed with which kind of component. And when I got the circuit boards in, though they looked really good right out of the box... Oh, sh <sighs> Okay. It became clear very quickly that something was wrong. So here's what happened. I had duplicated a component line in my bill of materials, which essentially meant that all nine of the 0603 10 kilo ohm resistors on this board had instead been stuffed with 0603 green LEDs. I was in a rush to get the boards to me. I didn't double check. Oops. I could have scrapped these boards. They weren't a huge cost. I could have just ordered them again, but I just wanted to see if there was a way I could fix these. I do have a roll of 06-03-10K resistors from back when I was assembling these by hand, and these resistors and these LEDs are both about one cent a piece, so it's not like there's a huge materials cost here. The ideal tool for this would have been a pair of soldering tweezers, which essentially is two soldering irons side by side with a hinge between them. They're great for desoldering surface mount parts but I don't own a pair of those. So I made this Franken tool with a soldering iron, a tip that I thought I would never use again, and a piece of copper wire. Let me be clear, this is not a great tool. The copper gets really sooty and covered in corrosion really fast, which drives the thermal conductivity down. I just kept applying flux and solder and wiping it on a damp sponge to try and maintain a little bit of the ability of the copper to drive heat into the circuit board to get these components off. This worked okay. It took about 10 minutes for me to do the first board and another 50 minutes to do the remaining nine boards. I did lift one copper pad off of the circuit board at one point, but I think I can bodge around that with a piece of wire. I have put a pair of desoldering tweezers on order for the next time I do something stupid like this, but for a quick fix, this worked all right, I would say. Of course, once all the LEDs were removed, they had to be replaced with these 0603 10K resistors, which took about another hour. So all in all, about two hours to fix this mistake, which if we recall, is still less time than I spent hand assembling just one of the PCBs in version 0.8. So we're still ahead of the game, although I do still feel pretty stupid about this.
In any case, all the parts for version 0.9.1 are 3D printed by now, so I'm going to move on to assembling the first batch of 10 lights, and I'll keep you posted when that happens. Epilogue. I took so long getting this video together that my soldering tweezers arrived. Don't worry, I'm sure I'll screw something else up soon and we'll get to see them in action. I'll see you next time.